how to go quickly from an initial idea to a presentable poster layout like this. In this video, I'm going to break down my process of going through quick and rough 2D sketching to isometric view, developing a basic 3D model in SketchUp, all the way to a perspective sketch and a simple presentation layout of the whole idea. Hi and welcome to another video, David here from Sketch Like an Architect. If you're wondering about how to put your ideas down on paper, or in iPad in this case, how to translate 2D sketch into a 3D isometric or perspective view, and how to translate all that into a little more tangible outcome that can be easily presented to other people, this video is for you. I'll be using an iPad Pro with an app called Procreate and also SketchUp for a very simple 3D modeling bit. All the specs and also my Procreate file as well as SketchUp file that I'm using in this video will be linked down below in the description box. You can download them for free to see all my layers and dig even deeper into this process if you like. Okay, let's jump right in. So as you can see, I started with a few simple 2D compositions and I decided to work further with this two barn house sketch with what I imagine can be a connecting glazed corridor. And because it's not 100% clear how it looks and works just from the elevation sketch, I also draw a simple top view. I quickly test a few other configurations, playing with the terrain and different height levels. Maybe I can come back to them later, but for now, I like to focus on the initial idea. I like to start with a simple 2D sketching at first, using elevation or section drawing, or maybe a side plan top view to first capture an idea. It's funny that how it works for me is exactly how Edmund Bacon described it. He said, it's in the doing that the idea comes. In other words, just when I start sketching and I'm already in the process of doing, suddenly more ideas come. Since it's a residential concept, my thoughts go immediately into dedicating one of the barn to a private zone with bedrooms and the other one for more social activities, including kitchen, living room, maybe a guest room. And the glazed box being a connector can also maybe create opportunities for outdoor patios or terraces, so the border between what's inside and outside gets blurred a little more, which is something I always appreciate in residential architecture, if the weather and climate allows for it. At this stage, I decide to translate the sketch into an isometric view to see how it works in 3D and to validate this idea further. How I do it in Procreate is that I set up an isometric grid and then I take separately the elevation and top view drawing and distort it into the isometric view. I have a general feeling for the scale, that's why I also like to include little human scale figures, but I'm not too bothered by any specific measurements at this stage. I guess the width of one of the barns can be around 3-4 meters maybe. My goal here is to quickly develop this idea into something more tangible than just a rough 2D sketch, so it can be worked on, developed and validated further. With the isometric view, you can see me adjusting the proportions as well as position of all three volumes as I go, including both barns and the connecting corridor. I take advantage of two things here. One, the digital nature of the sketch and the ability to have different elements separated on their own layers, something we can't do on paper. And second, the type of projection, this isometric view itself, because it allows me to move things easily around without losing the correct sense of scale and proportion as it would happen in perspective views because of foreshortening. Also, I can move things quite precisely along the isometric axes if I toggle on the magnetic snapping and use my other finger to lock to direction. That's why I think using axonometric views for diagramming and conceptual development is generally a great place to start. To get a better sense about materiality, I add a few colors and hatches to suggest what materials I have in mind. It's definitely not a final decision, just something to work with for now. So I'm thinking a combination of metal sheet cladding, Siberian large for the timber parts and glass for the corridor. Now I have just enough information to create a simple 3D model in SketchUp. The first thing I do is to export this image with a 2D and isometric view from Procreate as a JPEG and import it into SketchUp. I use the elevation drawing and the human figure to scale the image properly so I can trace it and build it into a one-to-one -one 3D model. 
The elevation and side plan is all I need to quite accurately build a simple volume of the barn. I build just one of them, create a component out of it and then duplicate it. So all the changes I make to one of them will apply also to the other one in real time and I don't have to do things twice. To suggest the cladding, I use the multiply and divide feature to quickly divide surfaces into a desired number of equal segments. Then I apply simple materials and adjust them so they fit with the line work. I built a wooden deck for the terrace with a hole for a tree and then I create a glass corridor intersecting both barns. After that, I model the timber frames, creating an extension to both barns and creating opportunities for a sheltered outdoor space. I choose a material for the timber parts and I go ahead to choose a nice two-point perspective view and shading. I create a few scenes, which are basically just saved views in SketchUp, to test different options for the perspective view and also to create an animation between them. I choose one of the views and create two scenes for export. One with only black and white line work and the other with nothing but shadows. These are the only two exports I need to work with further in Procreate and to draw a perspective illustration from. The 3D modeling part took me about an hour and if I'm completely honest, from that hour I spent maybe like 15, 20 minutes just orbiting around the 3D model and playing with the fog effect and animation. Not the absolutely most productive hour, but hey, it was fun. Back in Procreate, I duplicate and merge the 2D and isometric drawings. I scale them down and move them up on the canvas. I imported two images exported from SketchUp, the line work and the shadows. First, I import both of them so they nicely sit on each other before I transform them and move them around. I set the image with shadows to multiply blending mode so it nicely blends with the line work beneath it and by changing the layer opacity I can control how strong the shadows should appear. Next. I set the perspective grid. In this case it's quite easy, because thanks to the exported image from SketchUp, I know the position of the horizon line and the lines leading to the two vanishing points are very clear, so I can simply locate their position on the horizon line. I create a new layer, I choose my brush, in this case my dynamic ink brush, and I set the layer to drawing assistance so it will help me to guide my lines along the perspective grid. However, not all the lines are converging to the two vanishing points, right? Like the gable roof. You can still have the drawing assistance on and just hold your pencil down after you finish a stroke to change its direction. Using my hand sketch vegetation brushes, I quickly populate the sketch with the main tree and later on also with other shrubs and bushes to save time on drawing the entourage. For edges that are hidden or should not be as apparent, I use a dotted line. Together with changing the line weight and tonal values based on the importance of lines, these are some principles that help make the sketch more clear, understandable and visually appealing. For instance, the thickest lines are the ones for the edges of main geometry, thinner or lighter ones are for hatching and timber texture, and dotted ones for see-through or hidden edges. With my marker brushes and the drawing assistants turned on, I begin to color the ink sketch, starting with the wooden deck and timber parts of the house. I use the markers on purpose, because one, they are great complementary medium to the ink line work, and two, they natively add more texture to the sketch, making it more visually interesting than if I use just flat color fills. Next, I activate the selection tool to block out colored areas and also to erase it and clean it afterwards, like with the glazed surfaces and the sky. The sky, which I painted with a few rough brush strokes, looks really messy, so I'm gonna create a gradient from it instead, where it will be the brightest at the horizon line and it'll gradually turn to blue at the top of my canvas. For that, I'm going to simply use the Gaussian blur. I still want to include the 2D and isometric drawings on the canvas somewhere in the sky, but I want them to be more subtle as they are grabbing too much attention when they are colored. So I'm gonna duplicate the group of layers, get rid of the colors, flatten it and create a new white background for it. Then I draw professional leaves to create more organic look for the trees. Using a color fill, I add a background layer with freehand selection tool. 
And as one of the final touches, I add scattered light particles with my stippling brush for more uneven look. I blur the layer using Gaussian blur and lower the opacity or change the blending mode to soft light. Lastly, I add the text to the top left corner. I realize this has been a really quick rundown covering a lot of different techniques. So please, if you have any questions or if you'd appreciate more detailed explanation on any part of the process, just let me know in the comments. Don't forget that you can download my Procreate and SketchUp file from this video, as well as the brushes that I use to speed up the process. Check the description box for the links to everything. And if you like this video, I think you'll love this custom playlist I've made for you that has my other popular videos about digital sketching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!